good morning on this lovely Wednesday hump day morning. I hope everybody is having a good day. I'm going to see if I can invite a couple people. Come and watch. This is fun. I haven't done that before. Okay, so I'm just inviting a couple people and then um, that's good. Done. Okay, so good morning. I'm going to start off today like I usually do with pulling an affirmation card. And again, this is the deck I almost always use right now. The universe has your back. So, I'm going to start by pulling a card. And the card for us today, I feel like I keep pulling the cards, same cards over and over again, which makes sense if it's a message you really need to learn. Oh, I choose to learn through love. I feel like this is the one I chose last week also. I choose to learn through love. All right, so good morning. Let's just get started. So today I want to talk about spiritual disconnect. What is spiritual disconnection? Well, if you have used the energies around you, if you have, if you live kind of a spiritual life, if you do ritual, if you do um, goddess devotion work, those sorts of things, and you become disconnected, you will know it. You'll feel weird. You'll feel off. You just feel start to feel un. Connected, disconnected from the energies around you. Uh, sometimes ritual and other ceremonies and special activities like that no longer feel like they used to. They just start to feel different. You may have been finding yourself becoming more judgmental of other people. Um, and maybe like money has become a really important thing in your life rather than like your personal happiness. Uh, you may just kind of stop questioning authority or feel like you're stuck in a rut. Um, another like symptom of spiritual disconnect is if you're drinking too much or um, if you're doing drugs. Something that I that resonates really strongly with me is feeling homesick even when you're at home. I don't know if that resonates with anybody else here, but I really feel that. And then one more symptom is um, you've just kind of stopped being curious about spirituality and the universe and your beliefs and you're just doing other things and not focusing at all on your spiritual path. So spiritual connection is important because um, it helps us uh, develop as people and develop into the better people that we want to be. It helps us do some personal growth. Uh, uh, it's a connection to things that are not within yourself. So it's a connection to the energies, it's just a connection to God, however you want to see that, or the creator or the universe. And it can help you find and live out your purpose, which can in turn help you with making goals and helping you helping you like improve your life on a way that isn't just spiritual. Okay? So the reason why this came up for me, why this is important to me is because a couple years ago I went through a huge spiritual disconnection. And if you know very much about me, you know that I'm a high priestess in a Wiccan coven and I've been a high priestess for a really long time, um, like 15 years or so in covens. And so being spiritually connected is really important, especially in a position like that. So I went through this rough spiritual disconnect where I was still doing ritual, I was still doing everything, I was still teaching, I was still doing like checking off all my boxes, um, but I just didn't feel connected to anything. I didn't feel connected to the universe. I didn't feel connected to the energies. I mean, I felt like we were raising energy, but I didn't like feel that intrinsic connection anymore. Um, so the first two strategies that I'm going to share with you today are the two that worked the best for me because I finally was just fed up with it. I was, I just, I was like, well, I can't, I can't do my job as a high priestess if I'm living in this spiritual, the state of spiritual disconnection. 
So let's just get started. So the first one, they're the, they're, I'm going to share six with you today. But the first two are the ones that work the best for me. The first one is contemplation meditation. So um, this seems like it would be the easiest thing to do. But sometimes we forget. So when we do contemplation meditation, we sit in a meditative space and we contemplate a question. And the question that you probably would contemplate during this meditation is, why am I feeling spiritually disconnected? So you do your deep breaths, you do your countdown, whatever you do to get into a meditative state. And there are apps to help you with that if you're brand new to meditation. I use Insight Timer. It's really good. Anyway, so you get into this meditative state and you just focus on the question, why am I feeling spiritually disconnected? Or why am I feeling disconnected? Um, so just schedule some alone time, get into that state of mind, contemplate that question. Just sit there in a very receptive mode. Set your stage, put your crystals out, your incense, whatever you need, and just sit there, be receptive. And then every time you feel your mind wander, take, bring it back to your breath, pay attention to your breath, and then also um, pay it, bring it back to that focused question of why am I feeling spiritually disconnected? And make sure you've got a journal nearby because you likely will receive some sort of messages and it might not be like a string of words that forms a sentence that never happens for me, although I'm sure it happens for other people. For me, I usually get symbols or colors or snippets of words here and there or smells or, or sounds. And so when you're after you receive these messages, write them down because sometimes like a dream, you know, you'll think I'm going to remember this dream all day and then you don't because it goes away. So that also can happen for a meditation like this. So it's really important that you journal everything. Even if you think it's not important, write it down anyway. And that gives you a place to begin. Um, you might already know what, what these symbols mean to you. But you might not, and it, but it, and it might give you a place to start researching. Google's your friend. That's what I got. I, I got all of these bird symbols, and then I just started researching and researching and researching, and I ended up with my um, patron goddess, which is I've had like patron goddesses before, but not, nobody that I felt like really, really connected to. And, and that, that's what brought me out of my spiritual disconnection is I did this meditation and got all this information and researched and then I moved forward with, within my spiritual path and that really helped me. Okay, number two, create or recreate your altar. So if you don't have an altar, make an altar. Uh, if you've never made an altar, it's pretty easy. You just need a flat place on flat, place on which to place things and you just do that. So it's usually a table or if you're doing a ceremony, sometimes, you know, like women's circles, you sit on the floor and the altar is actually also on the floor. Um, it's the items that you place on your altar. It doesn't really matter unless you're part of a tradition. Like in the Wiccan tradition, we have certain things that go on the altar. I mean, we can add all these other different things, but we have like a core altar set up. But you don't have to have a core altar set up in your house. You can do whatever you want. I don't have a Wiccan altar back there. Oops. I don't have a Wiccan altar back there. It's These are things that I am working on. These are candles that I am burning for specific reasons. These are um, symbols that are important to me. So um, they, you either you want things to either have a significance to you. And even if your significance is... That looks pretty, and I like looking at it. As long as you know what the significance is, that's fine. Um, you, what you want to do is you want to think about what you want to do at that altar. What, why, what kind of connection are you trying to build? Are you trying to connect with nature? Are you trying to connect with the gods? Are you trying to connect? Are you do you have candles because you're setting lights, or you're doing workings with your candles? Um, like, what are you going to do at the altar? And there are many different kinds of altars. You can have, like, like I've got this pers this personal, like, general altar. Uh, you can have an ancestor shrine, which is really common around this time of year. Nature altar, goddess shrine. 
have a goddess shrine over this shoulder too. Can't really see her very well. Um, or like I said, a Wiccan altar. If you, especially if you're just learning Wicca, learning about Wicca, or about a specific tradition, it's always. I have found that it is helpful to put an altar together in that traditional traditional altar setup and then add the things that are personal to you. Okay. So what, what this does is when you look at this altar with all of these things that you have placed, it triggers something. It, it like triggers a spiritual shift in you. Um, if you already have an altar and you're like, I already have an altar, I'm still feeling spiritually disconnected. That is like a red flag that your altar has become kind of stale. So when I say stale altar, it, I mean like if you're looking around the room, you no longer really like notice your altar. It's just like become part of the furniture. It's just another thing in my house. Um, that means it's really becomes like pretty stale. Um, so what I do when my altar becomes stale, because it, it does all the time. If I'm not constantly working at my altar, and if you're not constantly working at your altar, whatever that means, lighting candles, praying, you know, then it's just it's going to become stale because you have a life to live and you're not using it. Which and there is nothing wrong with that. Everybody goes through that. So if your altar is stale, this is what I suggest you do: take all of the things that are on your altar and put them all away, away, away. Find a place for everything. Even the things that you think you're going to want to put on your altar again, put them away in the cabinets, all the way away, so you are not looking at them. And then clean the surface of your altar and then rebuild, rebuild your altar. And what this does is it makes sure that everything that you place on your altar is very intentional. You don't have anything left on your altar that's like, oh, I think that I should, you know, just, I should just leave this on here and leave this on there because I, kind of, I like that. I know I'm not, I'm going to want to put them on there again. But when you're choosing things from your, for your altar, from all of your, whatever, all of the stuff in your house, no matter what it is, um, when you're doing that, that, you're making those choices again, you might find yourself deciding not to put the things on that you thought that you would keep on. Like, I thought I would keep my God and Goddess candle on there and now I'm feeling a different shift. There is just something to be said about looking at a plain, um, a plain space in front of you. So that's something that really helped me when I was going through my spiritual disconnect. All right, number three, journaling or mind mapping. So journal on some spiritually, like spiritually related questions, like what do I believe? How do I see the God and the goddess or the creator? Where does energy come from? How can I manifest my dreams? Why do I or why do people do ceremony or ritual? What happens after I die? How can I celebrate the next holiday? Just like some spiritual questions to kind of shift your mind into moving in that way again. If you're not into journaling, and there are plenty of people who are not into journaling, um, try, you can try mind mapping instead. So instead of getting a journal and you're writing your full sentences, you can just, um, especially if, if you are um, kind of creative, get a blank piece of paper. It's kind of similar to what I talked about last week. The blank piece of paper, get your colored pens out and just put, write the question in the middle and just um, mind map as if you're outlining something with the lines and like, what do I believe? I believe this and this and this and this. And you can draw symbols. If you have an intuitive symbol that comes to you while you're doing this, you can set yourself up in like a meditation mindset and um, and get in that mindset while you are um, doing your mind mapping and doing your journaling and find the most important thing is find some quiet time, which I know is really difficult to say, especially if you have kids. But if you can just even spend five to ten minutes on something like this, it's really going to help you and make it as fun as possible. So decorate your journal page you know, use different colors or different mediums for your mind mapping. You know, it, getting that inner child involved is always a good thing, especially when it comes to trying to reconnect with something. Because as children, we create, we connect with everything. We're just like, there's a tree, it's amazing. There's a plant, it's amazing. You know, like we so connect with things so easily as children. So like invoking that inner child and the play and with the colored pens and the, if you've got stickers and just things that you might think 
when you're thinking about it, things you're thinking, well, that's silly. That's why. That's why you do it. Okay. So that's number three. So I'm going to go back and remind you guys what we already talked about. Number one is contemplation meditation upon the question, why am I spiritually disconnected? Number two is create or recreate your altar. If it's stale, get rid of it bring something new in. Number three is journaling or mind mapping. And number four is get your butt out into nature. So have you ever spent like the whole day at a park or gone camping or gone to the beach and you're there like mostly like almost the whole day? How do you feel? Think about how you feel at the end of the day. For me, I feel tired, but I also feel refreshed, right? So the average lifestyle now consists of living in wood and concrete boxes, right? So we're in our house and we get into our metal car and we drive to a concrete building in which we spend all of our day. And then we get back into that metal box and we drive back to our wooden concrete building in which we live. So we're just like in boxes, going from box to box to box to box to box to box all day, completely shut out from nature. And that's not how we're supposed to live. Like we all kind of know that it's convenient. Um, everything we need is like in the house, right? So, no wonder we get disconnected is when you are out in nature you can easily connect with the trees and the grass and the this and the that um and i think disconnection from nature is part is like probably the the most like the um the most common reason for your spiritual disconnection um so we can surround ourselves with the energies of the natural world and even if we don't try to connect with these energies, they're going to connect with us anyway, subconsciously, because that's, we are animals. We are of nature, right? We are part of nature. We are part of this earth's ecosystem. So whether we are trying so hard to connect with the energies or not, we're, it's, it's going to happen. And I think that's why at the end of the day, you, you feel rested, but also refreshed. So even if you don't live in a place where you can camp, um, you can camp or whatever, just see if you can go to the park and just be. Take some time to observe nature around you. Really look at the trees. Be curious. Think about what it, what would it be like to be short like a bug or to soar along the tree line. Like, just get really like, curious and allow your mind to wander and allow yourself to actually be present in that nature with you. Um, and observe yourself, which is something that I talk about a lot. It's one of my four four pillars of spiritual foundation work is observation and observe yourself. Touch a tree. For example, here's a tree. I, I, I can touch this tree and I'm like, okay, I'm touching the tree. But if you move your perception into your fingertips, like what does the bark feel under your, under your hand? Um, that sort of observation perception moving, you will pick up on some different things. When you put your hands on the ground, like if I'm sitting, and I put my hands on, on the ground at the park, I can be like, okay, I feel good, I feel grounded. But if I move my perception to the way my legs feel on the ground and the way my, what my hands are touching and what they're feeling, like just do some, do some actual like work, like just try to feel the life around you and that will help you with your spiritual disconnect for sure. Number five is do a tech disconnect or a tech detox or social media detox. Or I'm sure you see people do that all the time, right? Like I'm going on a social media detox for the weekend, which is great. Um, this would really be a good thing to do if, when you go to the park. Turn your phone off or you know leave it at home. I know it's really hard for some people. Um, so just don't answer or look at your phone. Even better, no computers, no TV or at the very least disconnect from social media. And part of the reason why I think this is important is we tend to crowdsource everything nowadays, right? Like you can't go into any sort of witchy forum on Facebook without seeing something like, I saw a crow today. What does that mean? Somebody tell me what that means. Or it, um, let's see, that's another good one. I see a lot. I had a dream and it was of an apple tree. What does that mean? Well, these things are going to all mean different things to different people. I mean, there are some 
there is some inherent symbolism in most of these things, but like if you don't look on the inside and you don't, and you don't like try to figure it out yourself, you don't ask yourself the question, what does this mean? And you're asking all of these other people who don't know you, who don't know your situation, who have no idea anything about your life. They're just, their perceptions, unless they're like a professional intuitive um, or, you know, professional reader or dream interpretation or whatever, they're going to be colored by their own perspectives and their own judgments and their own life, which is fine, which is great. Like, I'm a big fan of get all the information you can, but don't discount yourself first. Ask yourself, if you're going to ask the question out into the ether of the internet, ask yourself first. Find your truth first. So make sure that you're asking those questions. Make sure that you are touching base with yourself before you go outside of yourself and try to crowdsource the answer to things. Um, there are some questions like, oh, or, you know, like, I had planted rosemary and it's not doing very well, what can I do? Like that sort of thing, I totally get, <laughs> especially since um, I am not the best gardener. But, but if it's a spiritual question or it's a thing that really is kind of personal to you, ask yourself the question first before you start asking other people. And you might be surprised, You after you really ask yourself, what does this mean to me? What are, what are these symbols? Mean? Like, how do I feel in my dream? Um, all of that sort of thing. Ask yourself first. Because you might find the truth within yourself and then you don't have to go posting all over the place about that you saw a crow. I have a blog post about that. I should probably share that. Like, what is an omen and what is not an omen? Um, but anyway, so there's that. That's number five. Do a tech disconnect. Make sure you are not crowdsourcing your personal truth answers. And number six, well, let me, let me go back and just a reminder. Number one, contemplation and meditation. Number two, create or recreate an altar. Um, if it gets stale, clean everything off and rebuild it from scratch. It's really important. Three, journaling or mind mapping. If you're not into journaling, get a piece of paper and some colored pens and mind map answers to some journal prompts, some spiritual questions like what do I believe? Um, what comes after death? Uh, where does energy come from? How can I manifest my dreams? All of these things. If you don't want to journal, mind map. Not everybody likes to journal. Number four, get your butt out into nature and connect with those energies. And if you don't feel like you can connect with them because you don't feel like you know enough or whatever, you do, first of all, you know enough, you're gonna connect with them and they're gonna connect with you. <laughs> so don't stress that, just get out into nature and like hours, not like a minute, but like get outside for multiple hours at a time. Tech detox, right? Um, stop crowdsourcing answers if you have not yet looked inside yourself and just take a break from all of the screens and all of the plastic that surrounds us. Okay. And number six, and this is the final one today is spiritual group work. There's literally power in numbers, right? Okay. So I am not saying run off and find yourself a coven or, you know, Find some like magical group, which you can, which is awesome. You can start your own even. There, there are no rules that you cannot start your own magical group. Just saying, I did it. Worked out just fine. Still working out just fine. So if you don't, if you're like, if you really like being a solitary and you're like, I don't really want to join a group, that is not for me. Some people are like that. I used to be like that. Obviously, no, I am not. <laughs> but um, if that's your jam, that's totally fine. However, you might want to find a spiritually like-minded friend to practice with. Um, and so find, find a friend. You might even be able to find a friend on this group or go through like your local Facebook meetup group. Be very discerning. If you don't have any pagan or um, nature, I guess nature, religion aligned friends, be careful. Um, always meet somebody new in a public place. Uh, there are a lot of not terribly stable people out there. So um, just be really careful and be really careful who you let in your sphere. I'm just like disclaimer right now. 
But um, if you can, if you can find a friend that is spiritually inclined, like-minded, like you, um, that is awesome. That is a great friendship. Somebody you could trust. You have to make sure that you really can trust them to be in your energetic sphere. And then you can practice ritual with them. The cool thing is it, nothing has to be perfect. You don't have to be like, I'm a seven year long studied witch, blah, blah, blah. No, you can be brand new and find somebody else brand new, which is amazing, by the way. Enjoy it. It's rad to be brand new. And just practice ritual. Practice, I mean, if that's your jam. Don't do anything that is not your jam. But like, um, you can practice casting circles or calling quarters if that's part of what you want to do in your path. You can practice energy raising techniques. You can practice energy sensing techniques, you know, where you can sense each other's aura and energy. And you can practice energy healing. Um, and, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you can do energy healing without being like attuned to Reiki or whatever, angel, Zumba, healing, whatever. Um, you don't need to have any of those. I, I, I am attuned to Reiki, but you can still do energy healing and energy work with somebody else. And it's amazing. It is really great to have somebody that you trust that you can play with. Like, Spirituality is fun. Somebody, something that you can, you guys can meditate together, especially if you want to do like stillness meditation or contemplation meditation, but it's hard for you to find the time if you're at your, if you're at your house and you feel like, oh, I'll do, I'll do meditation after I clean the bathroom. I'll do, you know, if you're like one of those people, which I kind of am. So it's really good to have a friend or a partner to kind of keep you accountable. So you guys can meet at a central location or you can go to her house or she can come to your house um, and you guys can do whatever fun spiritual stuff that you want to do. You can just dis discuss. You can discuss some of those journal questions that I mentioned. What do you believe? How do you see the gods? <clears throat> when, you when you discuss something out loud, there is like magic to your words because you're using all four elements to make these words come out. You know, you've got... So, so physically discussing something with somebody is really powerful, especially in this age where we don't usually do that. Most of our communication is email or text or Facebook message or whatever. So actually having personal discussions is really awesome and it's really powerful. Um, you can learn songs or practice chanting or practice new techniques of something that you might have read about. You can read each other's tarot or runes or palms or energy. Uh, you can, if, if you guys have different, nothing, if you're knowledgeable about different things, just share that knowledge. Or you get, or, or if you don't have a friend and you think like, oh my gosh, there's nobody, there's nobody. I don't have any people that are like me in my whole town, which is true. There are some seriously small towns out there. See if you can join a class whether it is an online class or um, which it would be better if it was an in-person class. Even if you have to travel an hour to get there, it's worth it to make friends and to just be in the same energy as other energetic people. Because there are, you know, there are like, some people are really high vibe, some people are low vibe. And if you're not around a lot of people, a lot of the time, um, you're not gonna be able to really get a good grip on energy reading until you are around enough people who, you know, you can feel out their vibes. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the beginning real quick. Let's do this. I'm looking at my notes because I wanna just make sure that I didn't forget anything. Contemplation meditation, create or recreate your altar. This is really important. Those two things are the things that worked for me the best when I was going through my spiritual disconnect. Um, Journaling or mind mapping, get your butt out into nature, do a tech disconnect and look inside rather than crowdsourcing for answers. And number six is spiritual group work, whatever that means to you. Partner work, find a friend basically um, that you can like immerse yourself with in all this spiritual juicy deliciousness. So those are the six ways to resolve spiritual disconnect. And again, there are people watching now. I'm really happy about that when I started, there wasn't anybody. So hello, all of you awesome people. And just really quickly, I wanna talk, I'm just gonna review a bit about 
what spiritual disconnection feels like. It can feel you can feel unconnected, disconnected to the energies around you. Rituals and spiritual activities don't feel the same. You can be drinking too much. You can feel homesick. You can feel like you're stuck in a rut, like you don't want to try new things. You stop questioning authority, and you stop being curious about spirituality in the universe. Those are symptoms of spiritual disconnect. So you might not feel, especially if you if you haven't had like a solid spiritual path and then to feel that, that energetic disconnect, if you're feeling some of these things, you might be um, feeling spiritual disconnect. And it's important because it aids in our personal growth and our development, helps us connect to something other than ourselves and staying inside of our heads, which happens a lot. And it can help us find and live out our purpose. You know, it helps us identify our gifts and and um, and our purpose, which helps us align our goals with what our true purpose is. So that is it. That is six ways to resolve spiritual disconnect. Um, I really hope that this helped you. And um, next week, I am going to be talking about, I think it's um, five ways, I believe it's five ways to include ancestor work in your spiritual practice. I think that's what it is. Five ways to include your ancestor work into your spiritual practice, which is pretty cool because we've got all of that veil thinning energy happening. And you might have some noisy houses or, you know, things that seem to be moving on their own and all of that, like, awesome. It's like the perfect time to try to connect with your ancestors. So I'm going to talk about that next week. I, I wanted to start talking about it now, but I'll start talking about that next week. And um, I will see you next week at 1130 on Wednesday. Bye. 1130 Pacific time. Okay.